Hello students, welcome back to another episode of Principles of Micro. Today we're in chapter 16 looking at consumer choice. So we talked earlier about total utility and marginal utility. We also had this rule for what does optimal consumption look like. And by optimal meaning the best you can do given your budget constraint. So here's an example where you can practice your skills. So we'll stick with using broccoli and chocolate like we were in the previous video. So here's the margin utility you get from broccoli and from chocolate. You can see that margin utility is diminishing. That follows our law of diminishing marginal return. Now, here we're going to try to figure out what should the consumer do with their $8. So the first step to solving this problem is to fill in this table over here. So go ahead and work through that. Pause the video and when you're ready, press play and we'll see if you got it right. All right, I'll assume you have worked through that. So the first part's not that bad. So we had, um, the price of broccoli was 2, so 20 divided by 2 is 10, and 18 over 2 is 9, 13 over 2 is 6.5, and 6 over 2 is 3. So that's how we got this column over here. Now for chocolate, the price is 4, so I got to divide 36 by 4, and that gives me 9. Similarly, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 0 over 4 is 0. So you see our law of diminishing marginal utility at work. So as you have more and more chocolate, the extra chocolate gives you less and less satisfaction. So if you had three pieces of chocolate already, having piece number four doesn't give you any benefit. All right, so we filled in our table. Now let's go back to our big question, what should the consumer buy? So go ahead and pause the video and think about that. Once you think you've solved it, press play and we'll see if you got it right. All right, I'll assume you've given us some thought. So we have this rule we'd had earlier. We get some intuition for it. You wanna have the margin utility per dollar be equal across two goods. And if you have three or more goods, you have to have it equal across all three or four or however many goods you have. So you gotta look for parts of the table where that is true. It happens at two points. So if you have two broccoli and one chocolate shown here in green, margin utility per dollar is equal. However, if you have four broccoli and two chocolate, you also have same margin utility per dollar, three and three shown here in orange. So there are two bundles that seem to satisfy this rule, equal margin utility per dollar. Now, perhaps you're wondering why the number is going down when you consume more and more. If I consume more, won't that make me happier? Well, yes, total utility is going up, but marginal utility, the extra utility you get is going down. Like I was saying earlier, if you already had three pieces of chocolate, having piece number four doesn't give you as much satisfaction. The first piece, though, was really awesome. 36 utils there. All right, back to my question. So we have these two bundles that appear to satisfy the rule. So what should a consumer do? Should they buy... The first one here, two broccoli, one chocolate. Should they buy four broccoli, two chocolate? Or does it just not matter? Are they both equally desirable? So if you haven't worked that out already, go ahead and pause the video here and think about that before you press play and we see the answer. So it turns out that the consumer should pick the two broccoli, one chocolate. How do I know that? Well, our problem says the consumer has $8 to spend. The consumer has to stay 
within their budget constraint. So the price of broccoli is two. So you have two broccoli, you're spending two times two, which is $4 on broccoli. Price of chocolate is four. If you're buying one piece of chocolate, you're spending $4 on chocolate. So you buy that combination, that is that bundle of goods of two broccoli and one chocolate, then you're spending $8 on the food. So you're satisfying your budget constraint. Now, other combination there where you had four broccoli and two chocolate, that is too expensive for this consumer. Of course, they'd like to consume more if they could, but with only $8, that's not an option. So broccoli is $2 each, so you buy four broccoli, that's going to cost you $8 just on broccoli alone. If you're also buying two chocolate on top of that, and chocolate costs $4, that's another $8. So buying four broccoli and two chocolate is going to cost you $16. And that is unaffordable to this consumer. So for notation, we call this a bundle. A bundle is just some combination of goods. So two broccoli, one chocolate is a bundle. Four broccoli, two chocolate is another bundle. So to be optimal to be the best possible consumption the consumer can do has to satisfy that rule equal margin utility per dollar for all goods and also has to be within your budget constraints. You got to check the budget constraint as well to really know if it's the solution or not. So that's a basic overview of consumer theory and that's going to lay the foundations for supply and demand which we'll look at next in chapter three. So that wraps up this chapter. So be sure to tune in for our next episode. In the meantime, take care and stay safe out there.